Hey there everybody, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Right, so in the last episode we did some pretty much last collection stuff in the game actually. Um, in the last episode, and in this episode we are going to take on the final dungeon that houses the final crystal in the game. Obviously it's not the penultimate dungeon, the penultimate dungeon like I said in the last episode is Ganon's Tower, but you know what I mean, like the final dungeon in the game where you have to do any crystal collecting. Alright, so this dungeon is actually quite complicated in the way how you have to navigate around it. And the way how you have to navigate around it is by using mostly the Cane of Samaria to create those platforms. So you can get across the chasms in the gigantic rooms. Ah, uh, you found yourself the compass. Now you can pinpoint the lair of the dungeon's evil master. Right, so we got ourselves the compass first again this time. Right, so what you have to do with these eyes is look away from them. Don't look in their direction and back up. Don't go in, like, don't face their, don't face in the direction that they are in, otherwise they'll shoot lasers at you. Right, so let's have a look at our map. Alright, uh, so this is, a, yeah, like I say, this dungeon is not a big dungeon. It's probably one of the shortest dungeons in the Dark World. It's only, like, the first two floors that are really big, but then the further you get down, the less, more expanded it becomes, I guess would be a better way of explaining that. Right, so there's also one of these rooms where you have to use the Cane of Samaria to create a platform. There's one of those rooms that's really annoying and took me a hell of a, lo hell of a lot of time to figure it out. And I'll point it out to you when we get there. But it's actually on this floor. It's, an, it's the only... There's only two rooms like that on this floor. It wasn't the room we was just in, though. Yeah, we got the uh, endless onslaught of killer tiles. I want to attack us for no apparent reason. <laughs> yeah, just slash away it. Crazy. For some reason, I don't know what it is, but that pattern on the floor there looks like the same map as what it was in, you know, Link to Link's Awakening Turtle Rock. Like the overview of the map looks exactly the same as what it looks like on the floor where the missing tiles are. Yeah, but it's been a while since I played Link's Awakening, so I don't know if that's a hundred percent true. But <laughs> I I do know that there is Turtle Rock in Link's Awakening, though. Right, so uh, I shouldn't have picked up that magic because the, yeah, this is the room that I was talking about—the room that I struggled in the most uh, with the um, moving platforms that you have to create by using the key, by using the Canis Samaria. Right, so. Yeah, what you have to do here, you have to shoot the torches in a specific order with the fire rod. And you have to do it fairly quickly as well. Um, so when you come around here like this, now, like that, and then... Ah, oh, dude, no way did I mess that up. Hang on. No, dude, I messed it up on the last torch. Yeah, this room gives me a lot of difficulties. <laughs> so, I ha it, this, it may take me two takes, it may take me three takes, but as long as we get it done, that's all that matters. I just like to get it on the rebound, like come around here, and then do it like that. Ah, oh, what the hell? No way was that too slow, dude. No way was that too slow. I do it on the Game Boy, it's much easier because you're using a D-pad, but if I run out of magic here, I'm screwed. I have to, like, exit the dungeon, go back. It's one of those, exit the dungeon, get the magic pot at the beginning, and then, you know, start again. Oh, what the heck, dude? Right, th I think this is our last try. Our last time we can do it, otherwise we're going to run out of magic. Like, you can get the two, you can get the bottom row in one shot, the two on the bottom row, but then the two on the top row, it's like really difficult to do. So, maybe you can, I don't know. Oh, what the hell? No, I pressed the wrong button. Oh, I pressed the sword. <laughs> I, uh, I was meant to press the fire rod. And now my neck's starting to ache again. Oh, stiff neck. 
It's going to put me off my commentary. That's not good. It's one of those, you know, neck pains where you feel like you've pulled a muscle in your neck. Oh, it's irritating. And I imagine most of you have probably experienced that kind of pain where you've... Yeah, well that, that seems to work. I right, just need to get to the door in time, though. That's another problem. Um, yeah, well, that seemed to work, okay. Uh, I didn't run out of magic, too, so that's good. But you get plenty of magic in this dungeon anyway. It's ridiculous the amount of magic they give away in this dungeon. Like, big pots as well. I'm not, even, I'm not talking about little tiny, dincy, wincy pots. I'm talking about gigantic, big motherfucking pots. That give you extra Viagra magic. <laughs> oh, no, dude, don't go... Spiking me. It's not fair. It's not fair, I tell you. Alright, so we're pretty much cleared up the first floor now, so. But we also have a magic pot, like, pot full of magic, but I'm not going to use that. I really want to try and avoid using that until we get to the boss, because that's where we will be using the majority of our magic. Because the first phase of fighting that boss is using your magic to kill it. Whereas the second phase is really easy. It's not even that hard. Like after you've done the first phase, the boss is just a joke after that. It's really easy. Alright, so you, yeah, you want to try and avoid the chain chomps here. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get this. Use bombs. <laughs> That'd be easier. Yeah, let's use bombs. But you want to try and avoid them at the same time. And it's one of these blocks you have to push, yeah, like that. And I'm pretty sure arrows can go over these, yeah. Dude, you should know this stuff by now. Oh, dude, what the hell? No way did that kill me. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> that's unfair, dude. Rematch, rematch. I'm going to grab your chain and pull it, and then launch you off into space. <laughs> because obviously when I grab your chain, you're going to be resisting, begging for me to let go of you, and then it's, then like you're trying so hard to break free, I'll just let go, and then you'll fling off into space. And then fly off into orbit and get sucked into Jupiter's orbit and be crushed into smithereens. Well, that'd be a very painful death, actually. I mean, imagine being sucked up by Jupiter's orbit and then being crushed. Because that's basically what Jupiter's orbit would do. Because it does it with the planets. Like, well, not with the planets, but with the moons that it has. Because there are moons around Jupiter. There's like, I think there's 160-something moons around it. And every, because Jupiter's gravity is so intense, it literally breaks up the pla It breaks up the moon. The moons that it has and... Some of them are volcanic, some of them have water in it, some of them have ice in it. And then when they break up the surface of the planet, you can see the liquid that's inside it, because every single planet has a core. And those uh, moons are really big. Some of them are almost as big as our moon, or even bigger than our moon. And when Jupiter's orbit does that, it like because those moons have liquid in them and some some liquid substances that are inside those moons are you know highly highly flammable they have lots of lava in them you know some of them have a lot of liquid or gas stuff like that but People say that, I wonder if, the thing, the question that I've always wondered is if those planets actually have a surface. Because no one can find that out. No one can find out that Jupiter, Jupiter's, pl Jupiter, the planet Jupiter actually has a surface, jeez. But yeah, no one can actually figure that out because no one can send a probe in there without it being crushed. I mean, sure, they can send a probe around it. They can't send a probe inside it, though because of the mass. Alright, so here we go. There's a bunch of eyes on the wall. You want to try and 
Yeah. Well, you don't want to face it, dude. You're supposed to take your own advice, not ignore it. Yeah, I have a feeling we're probably going to die here. I'm trying to wait for this bomb to blow up. Holy jeez. Right, so this is where you're going to get your heart piece. I don't know which side it's on. I'm pretty sure it's on this side. So, you want to use your mirror here. And I'm pretty sure this is the cave with the heart piece in it. And yes, it is. All right. And this will give us our final um, heart container. And these guys are really easy to kill. Luckily, they didn't put any red ones in here. Because if they did, man. <laughs> Why isn't this one being able to shoot at? He's, like, hiding behind the block, being a coward. Like, I can't shoot him. Well, yeah, I can. There we go, like that. That works. Right, so, play whack-a-mole for a bit. <laughs> Get rid of the moles. And this is it, guys. The final piece of heart in the game. Technically. Uh, well, obviously the final heart container we'll get is from the boss. Uh, in Turtle Rock. And then we're pretty much 100% of the game. Um, until we got ourselves, you know, the final remaining stuff like the silver arrows and whatnot. Alright, do, we don't even have the big key yet, so I don't know what we're doing in here. <laughs> I should have got the big key first. And there's also a locked door there, which also requires you to use the big key. So we're going to have to go through the tunnels again to get the big key. Right, I'm pretty sure it's this one. It must be. Yeah, this is it, because then it'll take you around here. And you get a key from, in, from I think it's killing that gigantic pokey-like thing from Mario. <laughs> oh, great. Now I'm turned into a bunny rabbit. This is no time to be turned into Bugs Bunny, dude. I don't want to be eating carrots for the rest of my life. I don't want to be eating, I don't know, broccoli, maybe. <laughs> broccoli. <laughs> yeah, out of all the vegetables, you pick broccoli. Wow, I got one of those skulls right in the eye. Jeez. And these, those things are invincible. Oh, no, they're not. I thought those skulls were invincible. I don't know the best way of killing these things, but... Because when you slash them, their body parts go flying all over the place. Alright, so now we can... No, wait. Hang on a second. There's an eye there. Get in the door quick. <laughs> and this should take me to the big key. Yeah, it does. Right, this place always confuses me because it's like a maze of tunnels. Let's see ourselves the big key now. In this very epic-like room here. And it's the only room in the dungeon, I think, that has lava in it. So That's also what makes it cool. Cool. Right, the good thing is we haven't used all our fairies yet, and trust me, I want to use as less of those as I can. I mean, I also have blue potion to recover my health, but like I say, I want to save all the good stuff for the boss. Even though the second phase is easy, it can take quite a lot of damage from you. Like, that's the only bad thing about it. But, and also the first phase can kind of take a fair amount of damage from you too. But I think the second phase is a lot more lethal in damage, but it's a lot easier to kill. And you'll see why that is when we get there, but... Dude, come on, stop moving around the room. Stop bouncing around like you're on ecstasy. <laughs> I died again. Oh my god, I'm not even gonna... I'm not gonna make it through this dungeon in one piece, because there are a lot of rooms up ahead that are really tricky. And if I do so happen to die, well... Oh my god, this thing just won't stop bouncing around the room. God, how much ecstasy did you take? Jeez. <laughs> you took more ecstasy than the other guy did. Alright, I think it's this room. Uh, no, I'm not going to go that way because I don't think that's the correct path to take. I think it's down here that we actually want to go to. I'm 
But yeah, you, you don't have to use the cane of Samaria here, you can use the hook shot to get across. There you go. Got yourself some mirror shield. Nice, and look how big this thing is. Covers up my face, look at it. <laughs> it's that big, it covers up my face. But yeah, this this shield is actually a very handy uh, defense item. It can block a lot of projectiles. Like those laser beams that those eyes shoot at you. You can block those with your mirror shield. There's a room as well in this dungeon that has rupees in it. But I don't know if I'm going to... You know what? I, I could give it a try, but there are a lot of those spiky rolling things in there. Uh, but they're kind of easy to avoid, but if you get caught up in them, you can take a lot of damage from the other ones as well. So, But I'm heading in that way anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to give it a try, see what happens. But you've also got to kill all these slimes in here to open up the door. Oh, no, you don't. That's just to move the block. To open up the door, you have to pull one of these tongues. It should be this one right here. Yeah, and if you get the wrong one, a trap happens and a bunch of bombs fall on you. Yeah, that's not what you want. I'm going to try and get as many rupees in here as I can. Because I don't want to take, you know, too much damage in here. <laughs> well, the good thing is they don't go right up to the wall. So you can, like, easily do this without taking damage. If you do it, like, correctly. You have to watch out for the pattern of the, uh of the spiky rollers. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to get those though. Like that, maybe? Yeah, we've done it. Without dying. Oh wait, never mind. I <laughs> took damage then. Uh, we got 712 rupees, which is actually really good. Uh, I definitely benefited from that then. <laughs> I'm also going to have to use my... I'm going to have to use my blue potion because I really don't want to die. So here goes nothing. I really didn't want to do that, but I had no choice. Because if I die now, I'm going to have to go all the way through the dungeon again. Which is really not what I want to do. Okay, why did I do that? Why did I just go out the room? <laughs> I have no idea. Alright, so I'm obviously going to have to take damage here. It's inevitable. Alright, I need to... Do the right timing here. Be quick. There we go. So we're almost near, we're almost nearly there now. And this is the this is another one of those rooms that also caused me trouble as well. And I didn't mean to do that. That was the wrong time to use the Kena Samari. Or the wrong place, not the wrong time. This is the right time to use it, just the wrong place to use it. And I've forgotten the pattern of which way this thing goes. Oh there we go, this is it. Should be where the switch is. Alright. Stupid fireballs, man. Taking too much damage from those. Oh, dude, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, great. I'm going to take more damage here. Fantastic. Dude. What the hell? Okay, I'm, I'm probably going to die in this room. I'm not even kidding you. Well, where are you supposed to... Or how are you even supposed to... There we go, that's it. That's the right way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that room can be a bit tricky. Alright, uh, so this is where you want to basically sprint all the way down. Use your Pegasus boots, but obviously don't go too overzealous with it and fall off the edge. Right. No, dude. Stop going crazy with your Pegasus boots. Jeez. You don't have to go too fast. This ain't The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Fast. <laughs> right, so... I don't know which way you want to use your mirror shield here, but... It's probably this way. Yeah, that's right. 
because the direction the eye is facing, you want the shield to be facing in that direction. And the same with this as well. You want to do that. Like, this took me forever to figure out, but I don't know why it did. I mean, it's kind of blatantly obvious that you have to use your shield in that direction where the eye is facing. And, you know, the shield is pointing in that direction. So, wow, that was so close. Can't even believe that. How am I going to get that thing? Use my bow and arrow. That doesn't work. <laughs> um, I don't know then, because that's going to... Okay, I'll bring it out like that. Make it come over here. There we go. Yeah, just run through it. Yeah, with this room, you kind of have to take your time with it. I don't know what's down here, though. So I'm, I'm just going to quickly check. There might even be a fairy fountain. I don't know. There better be. Jeez. That would be the best thing ever if there was. Okay, no, there isn't. There's just a dead end. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, I'm just going to sprint through this. And uh, try and knock this Helmosaur thing off the edge. Alright, so yeah, we're almost here now at the boss, but I'm probably going to die during the boss because look how much health I have. Like, holy jeez. Like, holy balls to the walls, man. If I do die, I'm going to have to definitely make a cut and then see you at the boss because there is no chance in hell that I'm going to redo all this on screen. Alright, let me try my boomerang method again. Uh, no, that doesn't work, doesn't work. Screw it, screw it, screw it. <laughs> Please, for love of God, be health down here. Well, that wasn't enough, but... <laughs> I did say, please be health down here, and there was. So we're going across the epic chasm towards the boss. Also known as Trinix. Yeah, that's what the boss is called. Uh, there's no point in me even doing this, because I'm going to die. <laughs> uh, but, well. So I'm going to use my fire rod here first to get rid of this one. I'm not even going to use... No, nah, I died. There was no way I was going to survive that anyway. Alright, so you know what, guys? I'm going to make a cut, and I will collect all my shit, ready to take on the boss of Dungeon 7. So I will see you then. Okay, guys, never mind about what I said, because uh, I got a checkpoint, actually. <laughs> you know when I went out that dungeon, or went out the dungeon, and then there was a dead end at that point where I thought there was going to be a fairy fountain? Yeah, there was a checkpoint there, so I'm just going to resume with this and see how well we do. All right. <laughs> yeah, his, the turtle's head can actually come out and um, hit you, so you want to try and avoid that. I also have my green potion, so I'm fine for now. I just don't want to die, that's all. <laughs> right, yes, we got rid of the fire one. Alright, so now we're going to use our green potion here again. We're going to use our green potion here again. I haven't even used my green potion yet. I think the fire head is actually the easiest one to get rid of. I'm not sure, though. Just kind of want to take my time with this. Because if you rush it, you're going to die, basically. And that head can really extend out. Like, holy crap. Oh, dude, are you serious? No, I'm going to have to get my stuff back. I'm going to have to. Because <laughs> now I've run out of green potion and everything, so... I will definitely see you guys once i got my stuff back. Alright guys, <laughs> we are back. Right, so I am all tooled up. We've got four blue, four blue potions, the most expensive potions you can buy. That recovers all your health and all your magic, right? So we are ready to take on Trinix now, I think. Even though I am ridiculously low on health right now, but... I will use, I'll probably use one of my potions um, during the fight. 
like, probably at the beginning, <laughs> just so I can get some health here. Alright, so, here we go. Right, so... Even though I didn't really want to do that, but the dungeon was just, just had so many enemies and obstacles and stuff that it took a lot of health away from me during the dungeon. Or during the way of getting here, and that's lagging, like, a lot right now. Yeah, go on, take all your damage. Take all the damage you want against me, dude. I couldn't care less. Alright, so, yeah, gonna... Yeah, taking care of the ice one takes away most of your magic, but, like, taking care of this one right here is not too much of trouble. Because you can just slash him. You just... All you have to do is freeze the guy and then slash him. There you go. Now, here comes the second phase. The most easiest phase in the whole fight. You don't even have to use magic for this. But the ice on the floor isn't really going to help out that much. But he does extend his head though, I think. Still. And what's he doing? He's sequence breaking the game. He's going out the walls. Sequence breaking, dude. Yeah, just trying to avoid where he's going, basically. There you go. Easy said than done. Well, easy done than said. <laughs> yeah. Easy done than said. Right, so there we go. And there we go. That's the seventh crystal housing Princess Zelda. And the ice is still on the floor. What the hell? <laughs> I would have thought that would have evaporated or dissipated by now. And there's Princess Zelda. I appreciate you co your coming so far to rescue me as I thought you are the legendary hero. I have felt this from the first time we met. Ganon is waiting inside of his tower to pass through the gate linking, to linking the two worlds. Once Ganon enters the light world, it is unlikely that anyone can stop him. But if he stays in the closed space of this world, you can find him wherever he run where wherever he runs. Now go to the Tower of Ganon. We will use our combined powers to break the barrier. Let's return peace to the country without fail. Do you understand? Yep. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. What? You even say that too? <laughs> you say the same things as what all the other maidens said. Right, so you know what guys? I'm going to end off the episode here and continue on the next video. So in the next episode of Let's Play Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, we take on Ganon's Tower. Uh, well, we've got some other things to do first, but those are minor things that won't take too much time. So until then, this is NDM saying thanks for watching. Take care, buddy. See you on my next video, and goodbye.